Hello and welcome to another Minecraft plugin tutorial video. Today we're going to be dealing with name tags. I'm going to be showing you a simple way how to change what you can see above the player and how to actually change the entire player name. If I type in, for example, super duper, now you can see it says super duper. Not only this, but it also is reflected in the tap list. And if I disconnect and I connect again, it'll be persistent. The only downside is this code right here works for 1.8 up to 1.12, maybe 1.16, but 1.20 has completely different approach that I'm not going to be covering in this video because I found it to be overly complex and I don't want this video to be two, three hours long. So you can start figuring out things by the end of this video. It should not be impossible having viewed all the knowledge that I'm about to present to you and I can't wait to get started. To start off the code, I do recommend you create a tag command. Now, I already have pre-created a very, very basic skeleton of this command. If you don't know how to code in Java, check the course called Project Orient below. This is going to teach you how to understand the package, the public, the override, basically half of what you see on the screen. And then if you want to learn more about how to make commands for Minecraft plugins, check the video that we have in this very series called commands, I believe at the very beginning. Now, don't forget to register the command in the plugin that YML as always, as well as in the main cow canoon class, I believe is right here, get command set executor. This command simply forces the console, the, the sender not to be a console. And then it checks for the amount of arguments such that I have to type, let me just improve this. So I have to type in slash tag and then something. And the X right here is going to be the tag. If I type in reset, we'll simply reset the tag. Otherwise we'll set it just like this one. And for the storage of the tags, I'm not going to be using any settings because I already have a video about permanent storage in a custom settings file. Feel free to check that video if you need to. It is in this very series. But what I want to do for this tutorial is very, very simple. I'm just going to be having a private static map by player's unique ID and then the tag that I've picked called player tags right here. This will simply create a new hash map and we are going to get get it through a public static getter get player text right here. So inside this command, if I type in reset, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to cow canoon, get player text, and then remove by my unique ID, which I can get right here like this one. And then I can remove by the unique ID. Otherwise I'll simply put the tag there. And what I can do, I can open up chat color and I can also replace alternative colors in the tag such that we will also be able to use colors in there. However, keep in mind that especially for old Minecraft releases, the tag is simply limited to 16 characters. So we can ask if the tag is longer than 16 and then we can simply use the substring. That's pretty much it to finish this. Let me just end by sending the message to the player. Your tag has been reset. That's right. And likewise, right here, we don't have a player here. So we have also have to get the player right here. There we go. And then we can, of course, improve the unique ID by just calling the player itself. There we go. Now come the NMS imports. We're going to be using 1.8 that I covered in the last video. However, you should be able to figure things out and improve it up until I believe 1.6 16 is when that starts to break a little bit. As I said, this is not going to work on 1.20 yet. Maybe someone in the comments is smart enough to find a solution. I already spent time on it. I don't think that it is so important because you guys have so much free stuff on YouTube already. So I think you should be able to figure it out. So 1.8, I already covered how to get this imported in the last video. Dependency works like this one. I'm just connecting to my local jar file to get the actual paper server. And then what we are going to do, we're going to be simply calling the entity player, which I call the handle. And then to get the handle, I'll cast the player to craft player, make sure to import it from the right import as well as import the entity player. And if you can't do this, just right click cow canon, go to Maven, hit reload project. And now you should be able to access these NMS classes. And we can also import this directly like this one. Then when, once you cast it to the craft player, you should be able to see get handle method, which directly returns the NMS equivalent of the buckets players class. Now we're going to be iterating through online players by getting them all. And inside of this loop, we're going to be needing to get player connection field, which is quite easy because you can just call handle that player connection. Now inside of the connection, we can simply send packet method, which lets us send packets directly. The first one is called packet playout 
player info and this one needs to take an enum player info which is going to say remove the player and then it also needs the player which is the handle that we want to remove from the tap list and as well as the server itself and as well as the observable location of the other player so this is the first packet and then we need to send another packet by the same name instead of having remove player we're going to add the player and then we're going to be using a protocol lib to sort of position us right here such that when this packet is being sent we're going to be using protocol lib to edit it and then change the name to the tag that we stored in the hash map and then if we're sending the player to another player then the sender of the command we also need to make sure to send two additional packets first one is called entity destroy and we need to get the handle get the id to delete the other player from the other player's view so these two packets are not going to be sent to the actual sender because you can't really see your own entity um, in a way which you can delete it. You can, of course, see your own entity, but that's rendered on your client. So for the other players, they're going to see a bit a bit of a flash and the other player will flash a bit before they see the new name tag being updated. So that's how you destroy the old player. And then we, of course, have to send a, a new packet to spawn the player, which is called name entity spawn. And again, we're just gonna need the handle right here. It's pretty straightforward. Let's dive into protocol lib. Let's finish things on there. If you need to revisit your protocol lib knowledge or you have no knowledge at all, we have a video about packets as well as API video on how to import external libraries and external plugins in this very free YouTube, YouTube tutorial series. Please check it out before if you need to. I'm just going to assume that you are a little bit familiar with protocol lib. Again, if you're not, don't worry. Just refer back to the packets video here. So inside protocol lib, I can just copy this very line or these very lines just like this one and then the new packet listener is going to listen for a packet sent from the server to the client called player info so that we need to change on packet receiving to on packet sending i'll get the packet container right here and then i'll simply check which info action it is now please know that we're not going to be importing the nms action because protocol lib has, has its own class for it it's inside the enum wrappers classes which stores a bunch of other classes as alternatives so that you don't have to import nms so we're just going to find the same class and the same actions as the same action as we sent right here and then the way it actually works is that inside this packet if you have a look there is a list of info data right so we have to read the list of player info data by getting the player info data list and then we can just assume that there is only one list so we're going to be reading it on the first index and then i'll simply create an iterative loop such that and it lets us get data from the list and then also set data back to the list and then write it back to the packet when we find data that match our tag so first i can get the data ignore if the data is null and then i can get the game profile by calling get profile get unique id from the data and then if the tag no if the cow canoon get player tags contains the unique id then the ai is correct we can get the unique id of the player and then we can simply set the current item in the list to new player info data which is going to ask us for a bunch of information. So first one is the game profile. This is actually something we need to change. So this one is called wrapped game profile. And then we can just call it a new instance. This is going to actually require the unique ID. And then the name is actually going to be the tag. The second option inside the constructor is for the latency. We can just pass the old value. Third one is for the game mode. Likewise, we can pass the old value. And then the final one is just for the tag, I believe. And that one actually requires wrapped chat components. So we can do, we can just go to wrap chat component. We can go from the legacy text and we can put the tag right there. Now, when you're done, don't forget to call packet get player info data list and then write the at the first index at the zeroth index which we read from it don't forget to write the edited list there if you've done everything properly it's time to test it out all right guys so this account right here is the second account if i type in tag it will actually not work because i totally screwed up right here inside the for loop the player connection is actually the other player connection not our own connection so we have to basically just copy this code 
paste it right here and then just change the player to actually the online player. And now I typed tag and then hey, and you can see it actually works. We can also go with the longer one, hello world. And you can even use multiple colors as long as you uphold the 16 character limit. Now, please make sure to account for colors because every color adds two letters to the 16 length a limit again if you somehow figure it is out on 1.1920 there isn't that limit so these names can be way longer but on these older versions the maximum is just 16 letters now if i type in tag reset we should see back the original account what's cool about this is if you type in something like this one however this one is too long let me just type in second you should also see the change in your tap list for both this player that is being observing and the other player that has the name changed and since we're using protocol lib we can also disconnect connect again and basically every single time a packet is being broadcasted it is being filtered by protocol lib making it 100 percent bulletproof that's it for me today i encourage you guys to find a way to update this to the latest minecraft release with everything said in these tutorial videos it should not be impossible it should still be pretty challenging but it should not be impossible because i teach you i've told you how to make nms i've told you a little bit about packets how to dig into different versions of minecraft right now there's a lot of cool stuff that you'll find and of course if you want to dive deeper and if you want professional help including live coaching calls on zoom join project orient not only it contains seven weeks packed of java minecraft and bungie core training we also provide twice per week live zoom coaching calls with myself personally where i can answer any questions you can even unmute yourself share your screen and if you don't like the training we provide 30 day money back guarantee having said that thank you so much for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i can't wait to see you guys next time